Hello, I'm Ed Glazer, and this is Cities X, and I am delighted to be speaking today with Alessandra Brown, the director of the Roxbury Innovation Center. Thank you so much for talking to us. No problem. How is Roxbury changing, and what role is the Innovation Center playing in that? We are an or a nonprofit organization that is focused on empowering um, s small business owners, entrepreneurs, and innovators in the Roxbury community. And what did you see on the ground when you got there, and what did you try to do? Um, I saw that there was a definite need for a space where community members could just walk in, they could talk to someone. Um, so we, I created an open door policy very early on. I tell people we're like Krispy Kreme. Anytime you see the green lights of our center on, that means that there's a staff member and at this point in time, it's expanded into interns as well mm -hmm. who are there for you, who can answer questions about the center, and then who can assist you in setting up any meetings that, that you need. So what do the community members are asked for? So are they, are um, for? we are the second uh, Fab Lab to open in mm -hmm. Roxbury, um, South End Technology being the first Fab Lab period, but also being the first Fab Lab in Roxbury, which is in the South End. And Can then. Just tell us a little bit about what, what a Fab Lab means. Sure. So it's a digital fabrication center. So it primarily focuses on using digitized mechanisms. So 3D printers, laser cutters, vinyl cutters, and teaching community members how to use this equipment, how to um, use microelectronics for either their business pursuits or just generally how to use um, mm -hmm. these things. And so our program, Fab Lab Roxbury, also focuses on the same thing. Um, and you have this equipment in your yes we have a small uh, we have a small fab lab mm -hmm. uh, right now we're, we're we're finding it's kind of busting at the seams <laughs> a little bit um, but it's been an amazing experience to have and we just celebrated its first year this past February and so we have community members who stop in they learn um, computer-aided design um, we have student interns now who are very dedicated um, and very knowledgeable about the equipment in the Fab Lab. So it's been an evolution for that program to really see what the community members want specifically, um, especially as it comes to ideas, and then how to help them achieve those ideas, teach them um, about solar panels, um, how their, their idea for something solar powered can actually be done by them um, and, and teaching them how to do it. Tell us a little bit about the community members that come in. Are they younger? Are they older? What, what sort of mix do, they, do you get? So it's really hard to kind of put your finger on it. Um, I say that when we look at the age of our community members, um, we look at ages seven plus and seven being extremely young for us. Standardly, when we do student programming, we uh, advertise 10 to 14, mm -hmm. but we do make age exceptions based on the maturity of the child or if the mm -hmm. child's really I interested in technology. Because what we found and what has been studied um, in multiple places is that um, students from underrepresented backgrounds are disillusioned into STEM by the time they hit middle school, especially right. um, young men of color and that's something that we've really been trying to to break the cycle of so if you have a seven-year-old who is interested in computers who likes video games who likes anything tech-based will make that age exception tell us a little bit about your building who, who works in it Yes, so we are located in the Bruce Bowling Building, which um, is has been renovated um, and was really part of Menino's um, drive to have the central offices for Boston Public Schools move further into the community where um, parents could could get to them. Do kids come in who you know just? kids without parents just walk in who aren't yes. part of the building? You just have people coming into the... Yeah, it's a pretty active building on an average day. Um, we are surrounded by, if I remember correctly, three schools in our direct vicinity, and then several schools where the students have to pass through Dudley Station in order to, to take different buses home. I think I have a good sense as to how you might teach someone how to use a 3D printer. How do you teach someone to be an entrepreneur? I don't think we have to teach them how to be an entrepreneur. We just have to teach them how to focus their business. We have a lot of community members who have had businesses running for decades without mm -hmm. business plans or um, a solid business model. Um, and now they're looking for loans, they're looking for investment, and that's what banks and investors are looking for. They're looking for your business plan. How do you plan to scale? You know, what what is actually going on in the meat and bones of your business? Um, and so 
for early stage um, and, and companies that have been running for a while, we really focus on the business plan, mm -hmm. the financials. What's, what's your biggest challenge? What is it that, that drives you crazy uh, in, your, in your job? I think my biggest challenge is the anxiety that comes around our, our programming. Myself and, and Nisha McCray, who's our entrepreneur in residence and Fab Lab manager, we really strive to bring um, top quality programming to our community members. And when we roll out a new program, it's the level of anxiety that like, I am very much not standardly used to. And that's because I want our community members to see the value in the program and I want it to be impactful for them. So I definitely get that kind of theater director sense of anxiety when a new show opens every time we release a program and that's very often. Yeah. yeah. What do you see for the future? What are you hoping for? Well, for the future, we're hoping to, to see RIC's growth. Mm -hmm. um, at this point in time, our summers are superbly busy um, and we're starting to find that we just don't have enough space. Um, a lot of programming that community members continue to ask for that other organizations want to run, um, we just can't, uh, we can't run at RAC at this point in time. We're a little restricted by the capacity of our rooms. So it's definitely going to be an interesting, you know, three more years of exploring what more space would look like at RAC. The model for RAC um, can definitely be taken to other communities. It's definitely a neighborhood specific model. Mm -hmm. um, so you definitely have to be aware of uh, the politics in the neighborhood, um, the organizations in the neighborhood. I don't step on people's toes. I am really focusing RIC to be a platform and a hub for community members and community organizations.